Okay friends, now let's look at the enzyme catalysis process. And for understanding enzyme catalysis, uh, we'll be looking at an analogy. Analogy of, uh, let's say, few students uh, going for a specific exam. Now, now, students in this case like our enzymes. They try to read to get good marks in the exam. But uh, the reading performance we can easily get by looking at the graph. Well, let's say in x-axis we have the exam number of chapters that per student covers there. Uh, different exam chapters uh, that they cover and uh, the score that they got in those chapters. And this is uh, the, the graph for let's say student A. So if you look at here, in the graph for student A, if it goes with one chapter that is good, uh, slightly increasing for fourth chapter, but after fourth chapter, it's kind of, kind of stagnant, it's, it's kind of linearized. So what you can say, that it tastes a ch chapter number that more efficiency for the students preparing for the exam would have been better, like one, two, three, they're preparing and getting better scores, while after three, when go to the fourth chapter, uh, the candidates cannot usually cope up with it and can only reach a saturation point at the fourth chapter. If you look at the graph of uh, the chapter based on the same thing related to the enzymes if you look at here uh, now if we consider that x-axis is a substrate concentration and y-axis is the enzyme activity which is equivalent with the score you will see that same graph like that enzymes are also working in the same fashion when you give it one two three the substrate concentration raising over the time it's performing well with with very fast and beginning it's performing well but when uh, the the substrate concentration gets a little higher it reaches a saturation point okay and it's no longer be able to be give and provide better enzymatic activity after utilizing a specific amount of substrate concentration if you look at this thing for other students like say this is student b say this is student c You'll see different students have different way of handling the exam chapters and different students have the different uh, ability to score depending upon uh, their requirements and their preparation. The student who much prepared for the exam will do it better in scores, other one will not. In case of enzymes, that thing is also true. So for different enzymes, the substrate concentrations, they behave to the substrate concentration differently. So the increment in the substrate concentration, we observe, we, we observe the change in the enzyme activity and this mostly uh, at the beginning, we see the enzyme activity to rise, but after some time, the activity start to get a saturation point. Now, if you look at the ex example of one enzyme and how that enzyme functions, that enzyme is invertase. Invertase is an enzyme that converts non-reducing sugar into the reducing sugar. Example of a non-reducing sugar is sucrose. And invertase can convert sucrose into glucose, which is a reducing sugar, and fructose, which also have an amount of reducing power there. It converts sucrose into glucose and fructose. Now, in this case, the catalytic reactions that are shown in this figure and that also this invertase functions based on the concentration of the substrate that is sucrose that will be the availability of sucrose during the experiment as long as the sugar after joining into the live and they measure the restoration force the increased activity of the enzyme can be seen at the very beginning when they utilize substrate and the substrate concentration is being increased a little bit but after a while this is glucose and this is a fructose and they can rearrange, uh, I can show you the rearrangement structure of both like that. Okay. So the concept here is whatever modification they take, they take place or they provided here. Now if you observed that when the amount of the enzyme is fixed if we increase the amount of substrate, the reaction rate will increase. But the rise is not without the limits. 
there should be a limit for this rise. When the media reaches a certain concentration, the reaction does not increase further. The rates seem to be limited to the number of molecules of the enzymes that are involved with the process. Now, if you say the enzyme concentration will be constant, you can say that. But the substrate concentration is not constant. It's varying. It's changing. So, when you are increasing the substrate concentration for few minutes or for few time at the beginning, the catalytic activity it will rise, the enzyme conversion rate it will rise and when the substrate concentration reaches the saturation point then after increasing a lot when it reaches the saturation point the enzyme activity halts. So what we can get, what idea we can get from it that we have to determine the enzyme and substrate being the concentration of the substrate that that plays a vital role and knowing the concentration of substrate over the time can help us predict how it will involve with the process. Okay, let's look at uh, another situation. The increase in the substrate concentration and what are the consequences of increase in the substrate concentration. Now, for understanding, if you start increasing the substrate concentration, how it is going to affect, to understand that, we need to also look at the kinetics of the enzyme. So we need graph to plot the data with different substrate concentration and how the enzyme is behaving in response to that different sub substrate concentration. Now in this case, x axis carries the substrate concentration in micromole. In y axis, we have the product and the formation of product. These are the series of test tubes containing different concentration of the substrate that are listed. Now our idea is we put substrate, we get enzymes. Enzymes will convert substrates into the product P. So these reactions are carried out for a fixed period of time to understand what is the requirement of the substrate concentration in the process. Okay. Now the results can be found along with the substrate concentration increase that they react more quickly. Wow, look at here. This is for the different subset concentration, we have the different amount of product formation from different tubes. Now we are continuously increasing the substrate concentration and we want to see the amount of product that is formed till the end. And what we found out here is that sooner as we start to increase the substrate concentration, they react more quickly. But when the substrate concentration is too high, the activity of enzymes is no longer rising. This result directly on the drawing of that curve, we will see a graph that is depicting a saturation point when the graph is going to be linearized after a certain concentration of the substrate. And that is a true situation of how enzyme substrate complex works and how enzyme is involved with the conversion of substrates into the product. Now, Let's look at the process of enzyme kinetics and how enzyme converts the substrate where we tally with why exactly substrate concentration and high substrate concentration is preventing enzymes to work in a better way. So the essentials of enzyme catalytics we will be talking about a condition known as a steady state theory and this is a theory most of the enzyme catalysis processes based on with. So, this idea is provided by Michaelis and Menten and they proved this idea that the enzyme substrate must be together to form the enzyme substrate complex. Here goes the enzyme substrate complex formed and then it will be converted to the products. So, the more the enzyme substrate complex will be formed, the better the chances are that the substrate will be converted to the product. The speed of building up enzyme substrate complex is very important for determining the rate of the reaction. And the speed of the formation of enzyme substrate complex also determined by the presence and concentration of the substrate. So the idea of Michaelis and Menten is that this enzyme substrate complex will remain constant no matter what substrate is added and how it is converted to the product. They will try to maintain the enzyme substrate complex in a balanced 
situation while an enzyme is involved with the active process of catalysis. So we can, we can check that with the help of a, a stable concentration of the reaction of ES or enzyme substrate, this one, it plays a most vital role. So in steady state, the production of the enzyme substrate complex and the consumption of the transient state proceed at the same rate. That's why the concentration of transition state keeps constant and the concentration of the ES also keep in a constant because the production and the removal both are going on at the same rate. Now how this steady state can be proven? We can do some experiments. We can also check the enzyme kinetic experiments that we discussed earlier and uh, if we plot the data with the rising concentration of substrate and also product that normally what happens if you start with a fixed amount of substrate and a fixed concentration of enzymes what we will see is that over the time the substrate concentration and substrate will be utilized and the product will start to form. Now if you look at here and plot the data in the graph again let's say in the x axis we have the reaction time while in the y axis we have the concentration concentration of the substrate products and enzyme and also the enzyme substrate transition state. So substrate concentration will considerably fall because substrates are being utilized from the beginning as the reaction proceeds. Product concentration will start to rise because new products are being formed by conversion of the substrate with the help of the enzyme and in the middle this is the enzyme concentration. Now, there won't be a rapid fall in the enzyme concentration but it's sometimes while the enzyme is involved with the formation of enzyme substrate complex we won't find free enzymes at the beginning where you start with a free enzyme depicted as capital E you'll see a fall in the concentration of the free enzyme because the enzymes are now linked with substrate and they start forming enzyme substrate complex so the ES or enzyme substrate complex will start to form from the beginning but once it start to form the beginning the concentration of this enzyme substrate phase will remain in balanced it will remain in the balanced form that's what the beauty of the steady state assumption that enzyme substrate complex they present in a steady state because we are utilizing substrate in a specific rate we are producing a product in a specific rate Now if you look at uh, an example of enzyme catalysis in case of the invertase and if you look at the same situations and plot graphs with it, what we will find. So in this case let's say we are using a predefined amount of enzyme known as capital E, that is a free enzyme. Then we add substrate in various concentrations uh, depicted as capital S. We measure the product in fixed time, that's P divided by T and that's known as a velocity, the amount of products formed over time, known as a V0. And then we also have X and Y to plot to get uh, the, the curve and the curve shape is hyperbolic which we will see now. And we also figure out the maximum velocity that the reaction can achieve. Now we also find when Y equals half the Vmax, that is a substrate concentration. So let's look at it and I will explain that about the Km and what is Km I will be explaining it soon. So this is in the x axis we have the substrate concentration in y axis we have the, uh, the velocity that is V0 at the end we have the Vmax. So the curve that we get the hyperbolic curve. Now this is uh, the picture with the actual process of enzyme catalysis and necessary equipment that is listed. Now depending upon this, this reactions is depending upon the accessibility of the enzyme activity analysis but this experimental data it is showing us that as we start to increase the substrate concentration uh, from the beginning the velocity is also increasing that we studied in the last two or three different slides so we know this now. Now it will reach at a specific velocity after the utilization of a specific amount of substrate concentration 
beyond that substrate concentration even if you raise the substrate concentration it will not increase the velocity anymore so that end velocity that they can maximum reach, maximum reach is have the v max it's known as the maximum velocity or v max now if you point a specific region where half the velocity or v max is achieved and if you extrapolate that line to the to the x axis you will get a point a specific point of the substrate concentration at that substrate concentration the enzyme substrate reaction can reach half of its v max and that substrate concentration is known as km so km is the substrate concentration at which the enzyme substrate reaction reaches half of its v max so it's like a half life and half time ideas that we need uh, for assumptions of different experiments now if we do the same process uh, in a double reciprocal plot where we plot in x axis 1 by s and in y axis 1 by v0 we will have uh, the line intersecting that x and y axis in two different points which also help us to get two different parameters so what will get the maximum velocity v max which will be the intersecting line with this graph and the plot with the y axis and uh, minus 1 by km because it's it's the other side minus 1 by km that value gets in the intersection to the x axis beyond so this is the two types of plot that we usually use for determining the different chemical processes and the catalytic processes we also use this graphs to figure out different types of enzyme inhibitions as well let's go to the uh, last part of a real example some experimental data start with the data that is substrate product velocity and double reciprocal content of it and here we have the numbers so let's say we are having the substrate concentrations given product in the form of absorbance measured at 600 nanometer in this case for example then we have uh, the velocity that's developed for calculation of velocities uh, the micromole of the product produced over time yeah, which is in minute and then we simply get the values of in double reciprocal format that is a value for 1 by s and 1 by v which will be very easy to obtain based on the data that we got now we do all this reaction for 10 minutes and then we plot the data in the graph and what we found out is again substrate in the x axis velocity in the y axis and if you put those joints down we'll get the same type of thing that the enzyme concentration is increasing uh, i mean the enzyme uh, velocity is increasing activity is increasing after a certain substrate concentration it gets linearized and again in the double reciprocal plot we will get the same type of thing and we also get the value for vmax that is 1 here and km that is minus 3.8 so we'll get the values in both the sides so it is just to give you an idea about how enzyme works and if you do the realistic practical example of enzyme catalysis what you will get now you can also try this experiment in your lab with the same concentrations and stuff to find out and figure out whether the data is working with our data or not now this data might vary depending upon different influences like temperature the ph at which the enzyme works because there are different favorable conditions optimum conditions for the enzyme to work properly and if we change those conditions the enzyme may behave little differently in the chemical reactions will also behave little differently so that is the enzyme catalysis so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that because your subscription keeps me going to to create so many videos for you thank you